I love Google Calendar and it's quite a task to get everything from our project management tool, which is monday.com into calendar. I tried the integrated automation from monday.com to make events inside my Google Calendar. But the problem with that is it clocks my calendar and therefore nobody else can create meetings. And all of my colleagues asked me, hey, can you please change this somehow? And I did. I put everything now into Google Tasks because I like to see everything inside my calendar. I made this integration. It's really simple. Follow me along. I will show you how to do this. Okay, so we need three things. First of all, of course, monday.com because it's our project management tools where we create our sprints and where we have all of our clients and all these sprints, these are filtered only for me now, are on my plate. So that's the one thing we need. The other thing we need, of course, is Google Calendar. So if you don't use Google Calendar, this won't work. Inside of Google Calendar, you have Google Tasks. Google Tasks is connected to your account anyways, so you can use it here. If you have tasks, like here, it shows up in Google Calendar, which is kind of neat. And to connect these two, we need N8N or Note Nation. So you find the links below. So please use them if you want to. You find how to install N8N a video below as well. If you use the monday.com link, it's an affiliate link. So we get a small kickback, which enables us to create these videos. So please use them. So let's connect it. First thing we need is, of course, we need a new workflow in N8N. And of course, you need a board with different things. You can, we have a Kanban here as well. So this is our sprint Kanban. And this is the same thing only in database view. And this board is going to be synchronized to Google Calendar now. So click on integrate. And here we're going to integrate with the webhooks function. There is a great webhooks function from monday.com available inside monday.com. It doesn't cost anything. And there I'm going to use this one. When a column changes, send a webhook. I will just choose an account here, use another account. And in here, we need to connect now to the URL, which we will get from N8N. So move over to N8N and click on plus and look for webhook. Click on webhook and this gives you this uh, URL. That's the test URL. We were just clicking on it and this copies the URL into your clipboard. And from here, you can just insert it in here. That's the number one. Now, if we run this function, it listens for a webhook. So let's hit connect. And this gives us an error because monday.com expects a certain answer onto the webhook in order to release the actual data, which is great. So it doesn't give away the data into the internet and everybody can just get in between and collect your data, which you're sending via webhooks. It's impossible. So you need to get the token first and then give it back. And in order of that, the webhook releases the data. So this is great. And this is what we are going to do in N8N because N8N is so amazing, it can do that. So the standard thing inside N8N is to listen for an event and respond immediately. But we don't want it. We change this to using respond to webhook node and change this to post. And from there, we can create a webhook response. So respond to webhook. And there we click on JSON. And here we need to create a response body. That's what we need to send back. Because if you take a look here in the documentation and in the comprehensive guide, you will find how to verify a webhook from N8N. And this tells you need the response body should be an identical JSON post body. So let's create that. Let's wait for an event. Let's do that here. This should be caught. It's not here. Let's save first. And 
execute, connect. Okay, something didn't work, but something was working. So this is great. So we got the webhook with the challenge. Maybe in your case, it looks like this. You can switch between table and JSON view here. And let's go in here and this challenge body we need to give back. So let's just drag and drop this here. But now we only have the response code here. So we need to change this a little bit and put it inside curly brackets and quote unquote. And inside here, we will write challenge and put the response code into quotes as well and close with curly brackets. So in the end, it should look like that. That's very important to do exactly this. So from here, let's try the same thing again, execute the workflow and click on connect. And now it's there, which is great. So everything was working. And now you can say, okay, what's the rule? When a column changes, send a webhook. And with a column, you can say whatever you want. I have a start date and an end date for my tasks. And I want to synchronize when I create a start date for each of my tasks, obviously, because when I define the start date, I know, okay, on this day, I want to do it. So that's the trigger to put it on my calendar. So click on start date and put it to the board. The funny thing here is uh, if I decide, okay, uh, I needed to do something yesterday and there was an item already in my tasks on my calendar and I changed the start date to next Tuesday, then it will recreate the item and put a new item on the appropriate day then. So you will have your items there if you change everything in monday.com later on. And now we can take a look here into our NDN and see, okay, here we have basically the stuff, but we don't have data yet. So we need to try it once. So go here, click on save, and execute the workflow again. And now we need to try something. We need to create an item there. Let's create something here. Or I have here this test item. So I will just change the start date. Let's change it to the 20th, to tomorrow. And now the webhook was running already in the background. And here I have all the stuff going on. And very important what we need now, because I'm working with a team, maybe you work with a team as well, I guess so. So you need to catch the actual user ID of yourself, which is important. So in order to get your user ID, you can guess, or you can just uh, click here and filter for your own. And there you see in the URL, this is your user ID now, which is actually great. So this user ID and the user ID I have here are the same, which is amazing. So we can use this to take a look if the user ID is actually correct. And if yes, put it on my calendar, because if it's from one of my colleagues, I don't want to have it on my calendar. So I would just copy the user ID and make an if node, if, because this is really, really important. If you don't, you will end up doing stuff for your colleagues and go here. String value equals the user ID. So we want to test the user ID. You can drag and drop this here to be equal to your ID in this case. So if it's true, it's going to output here on true. If it's false, it's going to output in false range. So this is nice. And from here, we can actually say, okay, create a task in Google Tasks. So look for tasks and go there. So I have my Google Tasks account here. If you don't have a Google Tasks account, there is a great documentation actually on how to do that. Go to cloud.google.com. We have a video for how to connect Google Sheets with NADN. So take a look there. And from there, you go to Enabled APIs as soon as you have one and enable the Google Tasks API. Google Tasks API, click on that and click on Enable API. 
So as soon as you enabled it, it's going to work. So then select your Google Tasks account and say, okay, resource is of course task, operation is create, and task list is my tasks. So simple, simple. And from here, we can go on. So for testing purposes, there is a great uh, thing. It's pinning data. So I will just pin the data down, which I have here already, because then I can work with that and I don't need to create another item and another item and wait for webhooks or something. So I can just pin it and work from here. So as you can see, if I go to Google Tasks, there is nothing yet. So execute the previous nodes. And this gives me no data, which is kind of funny. Okay, but it's true. Why is it not true? Okay, I will change this here to number equal. And put in here user ID and number, yes. Execute again. True. Oh, yeah. With the number, it worked. So now I have my data here. And in Google Tasks, I can create the task now. So what I want to do is I want to have a title, of course. So I have here the Pulse name, which is the title in my case. It's called Test Item. So I will put this here. And as additional field, I want to have a due date because it makes sense to create this as a due date because I have this date. And then it's on the appropriate day, which is important. So I will put this here as well. The new value, yes. It's the value date. So put this here. And we have a previous, uh, previous value as well, but um, I don't want the previous date. You maybe don't have the previous date. So if you only do it once and create a new item, send it, then it's not going to be showing the previous date because there was none. So, okay, that's fine. And now we can execute that and take a look if we have a new task available. So something didn't work exactly because Google expects another due date format. So the format here is it's a simple date, but Google expects to have it in the standard time format. So we need to write something which is T for time and then 00.000 and C. So we need to put this there as well in the end. And from here, we can execute it again. And it created our task. And it's uh, putting it in at, at the beginning of the day. Of course, you can add times and whatever you want. But for me, that's actually fine. So let's check. I am going to tomorrow and I have the test item here, which is great. So I'm clicking in here. Then the date is Monday 20th February. And I can do whatever I need to do and work from there. So every time when I create a new item now, it should be posted directly into my Google Tasks, but it's not going to work. So we need to do one very important thing. And this is changing the webhook to a production webhook, because at the moment we only have the test webhook in our integration and that's not going to work. So let's change this here. Go to here up to integrations and click the three dots and click on edit and click here to use another account. And in here, let's go back to our first webhook, click on production URL, copy the URL, put it in and hit connect. But in order to get it going, you need to activate the thing and save, of course. And now you can connect. And say, okay, when start date changes, yes, that's fine. Send a webhook. Okay, and now we can create a new item. Test two, put in my name, and change the date 
21st and a few seconds it's appearing here there it is so this is how you can connect monday.com your tasks with calendar and google tasks in order to have everything in only one app to save you time to do whatever you actually need to do and not switch around between different programs in order to see whatever is on your plate. I hope it helps and you can be more productive with that. And I see you in the next video.